Mathematical modeling, the Malthusian population model. Just a few points about models. They are theoretical. They're based on assumptions. Well, we base life on assumptions. Uh, for example, when you drive off at the traffic light when the light turns green, you make the assumption that no car is going to come flying through the other way. They're theoretical. They don't take changes in circumstance or technology into account. And this is a discrete model, which means it works from time to time, like average gradient. The average gradient of a curve is the gradient from one point to another, no matter what happens between the two points. That model, which isn't discrete, is called continuous. So this is the first of our models. Robert Malthus lived in the 18th century, a political economist, and he was particularly interested in population numbers, both humans and animals. Very similar principle to compound interest, Pn being the population of a species in a cycle, and Pn plus 1 the population of the species in the next cycle. Very similar to compound interest, there's the compound interest formula. Now here's Robert Malthus's formula, where Pn, the next cycle's population, similar to the amount, is equal to the previous population, the present population, which is like the principal, 1 plus R, where R is the rate of increase. And because it's discrete, it's only for a single cycle at a time. And we calculate each cycle in turn. Note that cycles can be weeks, months, years, or just arbitrary. There's an example a bit further on which uses a 12-day cycle because that's the life cycle of a spider. So, it's based on an assumption that without any external influence, the population increases in a geometric ratio, doubling each time, and that the increase in food supply is arithmetic. In other words, we're adding each time on to get the next, next amount of food. And populations may exceed the food supply for a short period. But this will be quickly followed by widespread poverty, starvation, and disease to restore the equilibrium. So populations have a bit of a yo-yo effect, where they increase, and then because of the strain the population numbers put on the environment, they decrease again, and then the food supply can increase, and so on. Let's look at an example. A private game farm has 50 giraffes and no predators at this stage and 280 trees. Only the giraffes feed on those trees. The giraffe population increased by 8% each year. So like compound interest, the rate would be 1.08. The giraffe population reaches 20%. When it reaches 20% of the tree population, they will begin to cause irreversible damages to the trees and seriously threaten the financial and ecological well-being of the farm. So the giraffe population cannot exceed 20% of the tree population. To try to make up for this, the farmer adds new trees, but he can only add 20 new trees each year.
we were asked to calculate the giraffe population for the first 12 years. So this being discrete, we just calculate it year by year. Same for the tree population. During which year will the giraffe population surpass the 20% threshold? So all we're going to do is we're going to take 20% of the tree population every year and compare it to the giraffe population. How would it help the ecological lifespan of the farm if the farmer sold two giraffe from the farm each year? That'll obviously increase the number of years because there wouldn't be as much strain on the trees. This could ultimately be used to work out how many giraffe should be sold each year to keep up with the trees. So there's the summary. And let's calculate the giraffe population for the first 12 years. All we're doing is we're multiplying by 1.08. We ignore fractions. In other words, we round everything downwards. We cannot have 3,8 of a giraffe. Tree population, starting at 280 and adding 20 each year. Now we need to know when the giraffe population will surpass that 20% of the tree population. So let's list 20% of the trees. So this here is 20% of these numbers. And we'll list the giraffe once again there. And all we do is look along the line because each of these year one, year, beginning year one, year two, year three, year four, etc. to see when the giraffes exceed. And there we are. Don't count that as year one because that's position zero. One year, two year, three year, four year, five year, six year, seven year. So, seven years. How would it help the ecological lifespan if the fa of the farm if the farmer sold two giraffe from the farm each year? Well, that'll alter our Malthusian formula because where we have that being the case, we now need to subtract 2 from it. So there we are, we're putting minus 2 at the end. But once again, we need to calculate each time. So let's put it into a table. There we are, that's where the exceeding occurred. That's when the giraffe surpassed the tree population. 133 giraffes, after you've taken the two away, and 132 is 20% of the trees. And that works out at 19 years, so it's increased the ecological lifespan by 12 years. So now we're looking at a spider mite. Rigid life cycle. 12 day lifespan. At the end of 12 years, 12 days, oops, we, the spider mite dies, the female. Lays 30 eggs shortly before the end. Females hatch from 82% of the eggs. 50% of the eggs hatch and survive to maturity. Right, starting with one female, determine the female population after two months. 60 days, that is five lifespans. And then if the female population reaches a steady state after two months, what fraction of the 30 eggs must hatch and survive to maturity? Well, let's look at the first question. There's the summary. The important thing here is to determine the actual growth rate of the population. As while their eggs hatching, there are spiders dying. So that's the intrinsic growth rate. So intrinsic growth rate, birth rate minus death rate per 12 day life cycle. And it's the rate, so it's per spider. Birth rate. So those three multiply together to give us the birth rate. 
the death rate is one female per cycle so there's the death rate so the intrinsic growth rate 12.3 minus 1 11.3 And there's our formula. Now, so let's calculate. At P0, we have 1. P1 will have 15, 30 eggs, times 0.82. And the female dies, so we'll end up with 11. Approximately 11. Thereafter, let's use the formula, and there is the number of spiders for that female per cycle. Second part, if the female population reaches a steady state after two months, what fraction of the 30 eggs must hatch and survive to maturity? Well, for a steady state, there shouldn't be any increase, so therefore the birth rate must equal the death rate. Well, there's the birth rate, there's the death rate at the moment. And it says how many eggs must hatch, so therefore it's that 50% we're looking at. We say, well, what's that going to change to? So we're going to replace that 0.5 with x because that's what we want to know we're going to replace that 12.3 with 1 because we don't want a growth rate of 12.3 we want a growth rate equal to the death rate of 1 and we have an equation to solve for x and that means 4.06% of the eggs must hatch and survive.